Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to look at Spring Boot and how to apply JSON logging and how to add user name and session ID to the logging. Because that uh, can help that can help us a lot when we want to debug. If we know which user actually did this and which session, which request it was that triggered these log um, these log uh, uh, entries, then uh, it will just help us a lot when we are debugging. So uh, first of all, uh, what is centralized logging? Because this is actually usually what 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 JSON logging is used for. Centralized logging is if you have one log system, one uh, uh, it can be uh, one or more multiple uh, multiple log uh, databases. But you have you have like one system where you have one logging system where all of your applications, all of your Spring Boot applications, all of your microservices, um, or monolith if you're using monolith that the uh, uh, monolith are good sometimes and microservices are, are good uh, other times, right? So um, here we have our Spring Boot applications, and every time they log something, then um, then if they send this log these log statement to um, to a a centralized logging framework. They usually do that in, in in the format of JSON because then they can just add all of the all of the all of the fields. And then when some user wants to extract something from, uh, let's call this Spring Boot application two, and this one over here is, is application one. So then when the user wants to create a query uh, in some kind of uh, yeah, in in some clients, it uh, there are a lot of clients actually um, the, that are made for these log for these centralized logging systems. Um, then, then the query can then the, the, in, inside the query you can actually then decide which fields that you, the, the, this that you're interested in. In maybe maybe in this query right here we're interested in the user the username, and maybe we're also interested in the level and and stuff like that. Then we we'll just add that to the query, and then then we get uh, that um, in in the log client like that. So this is centralized logging. But uh, so this means that we should actually just think about each log statement as a set of data that we that we place um, to on on some system. And the the cool thing about these centralized logging system is that you, it's actually quite easy to actually replace them. So if you want suddenly if you want to replace them to, to some with something else, then you just add a new. Um, you just add, usually you just add a new daemon. Um, to your, if you have a, a Kubernetes cluster, then you can just add a new log daemon that then uh, that then picks up all of the logging. Um, that's uh, usually the the solution there. So many times you do not have to change anything in your application if you have configured your Spring Boot application with log uh, back and log stash, and then um, if you set it up to use JSON logging. This is exactly what we're going to do in this example right here. So. Yes, I know it was long introduction, but here comes the here comes the cool stuff. So first of all, we have to enable. I'm using Gradle right here, and if you use Maven, then you just add a Maven dependency uh, named uh, Logstash Logback, and uh, you need to add the encoder, the Logstash Logback encoder right here. I'm using version seven uh, seven point four. There are probably a newer version up out there. You always check and use the latest and greatest if if uh, there are, there are uh, any. Uh, because um, because of course you don't want to have uh, security holes in your software, so this this is why it's important to bump your um, to bump your all of your dependencies once in a while, and maybe also to run some uh, dependency analyzers like uh, OWASP. Uh, yeah. So so now we have added our uh, the dependency. Then the next thing we can do is that now we can actually use something from the Logstash. Logback encoder, and we can set this up in our logback spring XML file. If you saw the video that I made the last week, then you would actually see how you could uh, how you could format your console uh, logging. You know the line logger, so and how to in a, and how to add a username and also how to add session. This is this part up here. Now you can just ignore that because now we are now we are creating an, a new appender. This is called an appender. And this appender is a JSON appender. Again, we are, st we are still using this class right here, console appender. The, the console appender just means that we are just spraying out the or, or lock on out into the console. We are not sending it to any uh, centralized locking. We could actually do that. Your Spring Boot applications can actually be set up so they actually uh, use some kind of uh, uh, appender that sends it to a centralized locking system. That is also okay to set it up like that, but usually you would actually just have them 
uh, spread out into the console, and then you will have something around it that then picks it up. If you're using the cloud, for instance, Google Cloud, Amazon, Asia, etc., then you would actually have centralized locking uh, per default, then the lock would be picked up and, um, and the, 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 lock, uh, the lock explorer for each of these clouds that I just mentioned would then uh, provide you the features to actually create queries uh, across all of your uh, cloud services. Uh, but that's another story. So here we have the encoder right here. So here I'm using the uh, Logstash encoder right here. And then I add something called a provider. And again, the way to actually figure this, these things out, it's very complex, the, the Logstash uh, and the Logback uh, library. Uh, um, uh, the way to actually figure this out is actually to, to read the documentation and then to do a couple of Stack Overflow uh, searches. Then you will co probably also come up with the same solution right here. I have made this Mike's JSON provider right here. So I have this is a standard um, standard uh, Logstash encoder, uh, JSON encoder, and then I use my own provider right here. Uh, what does this do, this weird provider that I have right here? Uh, uh, before I show that, let me just show you that I have a Spring profile right here that says default, and then I want to use the JSON appender. This is important because usually you would have multiple sections, then you would have maybe something called production, production, and then uh, in, in production you would use the JSON appender, and then in uh, on, when you are coding locally, then you would probably use your console appender instead. So this is this is usually the setup. It's just uh, yeah, just as bonus information. So here we have Mike's JSON provider. Let us look at this cool class that I have right here. It extends the abstract JSON provider. Okay, so we now we already know that this is something that can write or handle JSON. Uh, and this is exactly what it does. This is an abstract, uh, this is an abstract class, and it has a generic type with the type AI locking event. And this abstract class, if we go down and look at right here, then it says that you have to. Um, it actually does not say anything right here. So it again extends something. It again extends something. It extends. Um, it implements the JSON provider. Yes, it implements the JSON provider. And in the JSON provider, we have the right to, that we have the right to, which is not being implemented um, yeah, by this abstract class, and therefore we have to um, we have to implement it in our class. If you're in any doubt, then what you do is you, you say extends and then abstract JSON provider, then you go to, so you set the cursor, uh, after your uh, after your provider, and you can name it whatever you can name a custom JSON provider or my cool uh, JSON provider, of course. Then you press Alt uh, Enter, or and then you say implement methods. Uh, let me just remove this one right here. So you just you just set your cursor right here. Press Alt and Enter, and then you can say implement methods. You can also press Alt Insert, I think. Alt Insert, and then you can say implement methods right there. Alt, uh, alt enter actually tries to solve it for us with an implement methods. Yes, right too. And then, of course, I have it in the clipboard, so I'll just paste it from the clipboard right here. So what what I'm doing right here? So there are actually some utilities, and these utilities come from the Logstash Logback Composite package, which is right there. And here we can then say write string field, and then we say please take the generator, and then write user. And then we say new user converter right here. This this user converter right here, that that's the one we used in the last video, where we actually um, where we use this method right here to to get the user from the security context in Spring, right? So it was just to reuse the same class. I could actually just have I could have taken this code right here, of course, and I could have added it, added the code um, to this method right here. But it, it but it looks it's quite cool that we can reuse. The same user converter, um, uh, yeah, and it, it, it's it's not and it just doesn't depend on whether we want to use JSON locking or if we want to use line the line locker. Um, so here we have the session converter. The session converter it just gives us it provides us with the um, with the request session ID. So this means that if we get a request out from outside into our controllers, then we have a session ID. If not, then we do not have a session ID. The same with the security uh, context, uh, by the way. Okay, so now we, have, but now we have set that up. Is that all, Mike? Yes, that is actually all. So now I'm going to run my spaceship test. This test, it does not matter what it do, what, what it do, what it does. But if you're interested in what it actually does, then see my video about HTTP client interfaces. Um, here we have the output from the test. We get some JSON, and then we get some weird stuff that is not JSON right here. Why do we get that, Mike? That is because I have. This is because I've been naughty. I've been creating some system out print lines somewhere in my code. 
So just ignore that, um, or we can actually fix it in the end. Let us, let us see here. That first of all, I'm going to take this JSON right here. If you deal with JSON in output, sometimes you could actually, and you want to see it in a, uh, yeah, nicely formatted. It then there's a trick. You can go up and then you can create a new file in IntelliJ. New file, new file, and then you just say uh, debug.json or whatever you want to name it. You press Control V, then you just uh, Control S for save, and look now it actually formats the JSON, so it looks nice. So now we actually have some nice JSON right here, and the two last fields. Look, we have user mic and session blah 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 blah, session blah 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 blah. Yeah. So that is just the yeah. So that is actually just by the book. And here we can see the message right here. And this is actually if you use centralized blocking, then you have all of these fields right here to actually query on. So you should actually see each block statement not as a line as you would when in uh, yeah in a lot of in a lot of systems you can actually see the line output. But instead of seeing it as a line, line output, you should just see it as a uh, uh, you just see it as a map with a key and a value. Just see it as a uh, bucket of data, and then uh, of course it. It has some kind of key, so you can actually query on it later on. So it's a bucket, and you can add as many fields as you want to. Uh, so this bucket, this bucket has an infinite space. You can put in, uh, uh, you can put in your, your your stuff before we're going to the beach. You can also put in your skis and your helmet for roller skating. You can put whatever you want to in this bucket right here, uh, because when you are when you're creating your query then at query time, then you can decide. Whether you are interested in the skis or whether you are interested in the, in, in the beach beach uh, equipment, or if you are interested in uh, in the lemonade that you also put in the bucket, right? You can choose that at a query time. I don't know if it made more sense when I used the object oriented talk, or if it uh, if I should just keep to the to the more geeky expressions like this is a hash map. <laughs> this is a hash map. <laughs> okay, so this is it. So it actually. Um, yeah, you can see when you run the test, it's, it seems fine right here. And um, should we go fix the test? Spaceship controller test. Yes, why not? Spaceship controller controller test. Yes, there it is. There it is. This is our test. So now we will go down here. And look, here's a naughty code. When you are dealing with when you are dealing with, uh, with the lockback, then you should use, use SL for J. Um, the problem is that you can actually, it's, you can usually not do that in the tests because it is only applied, the, the lockback is usually only applied to the real code, not to the test code right here. So this means that if you want some more lock statements, then we can say, if, then we can say, this is ships with header right here. Um, wasn't there some kind of, I think there was a, okay, but it, this means that if, if you, if you want to, if you want to lock something, for instance, if you want to use the cargo controller right here, the cargo controller, so then you, then I, uh, then you could add, add SL for the like this, this is a lumpbox annotation, this means that then you would have your locker right here, and we say lock that one, um, Cargo is being unloaded, unloaded, something like that. And then we can also say, oh yeah, we are actually, we are actually, uh, we're actually printing out the cargo down here. So now let us try to, uh, do we have a test for that actually? So maybe we have cargo test. Yes, that is, we have a cargo test right there. Now let me press play on this test right here. Now we should get a warning. <clears throat> so here we have all of our output. Look at this beautiful JSON. Look at this beautiful JSON right here. Yes, it's cool. It's awesome. Um, cargo is being loaded. This was the new one, the, the new log entry that we created. So let us just replace the old log entry right here. Let us see what, what, what it looks like. You can actually just see it actually has some cargo has being loaded then in a space in the end because I forgot to delete that space. And then we can see that this is the logger, the cargo controller. This means that we know exactly which class this actually happened in. And we can see the level is warning and anonymous user. Yes, this, this is because the cargo controller is without security. That's an endpoint without security. And then we get this anonymous user right here. 
and we also get the session ID right here. So that's actually it. Um, I don't think I will show more tonight. Um, logging is, of course, very interesting. This is why many of us are developers. Uh, we became developers when we saw logging, how cool the log output was. No, I'm just kidding, of course. Logging is, is very boring, usually for most people. Uh, but it is, all, it is very important. And if you have any system that goes into production, you need to think about your logging. You need to not to be too verbose. You also need to change. Up, you also need to think about your log level. Use debug statements when this is not really important. And when you go, when you place your application into production, then uh, then consider actually choosing log level warning uh, or something like that. Uh, because you don't want all the chit chat. You just want to know when there are some exceptions or errors that you need to to handle. Um, yeah, but sometimes you want info also. So. Just think, think about your logging. You need to be aware of it, and uh, you need to have access to your log. Uh, and need to be, you need, and it needs to be easy to actually extract this log and get the exceptions. Um, and you should actually follow up on all exceptions in your code, um, maybe once per day or uh, whatever. In the beginning, you should actually just sit and watch for every. Uh, yeah, you should actually, you can actually grab after error messages in, in your log. And then you can, then you could uh, then you can remove all of your errors if you just went into production, right? Uh, you would may maybe you will say that, uh, that, but there should be no production errors, right? Uh, there are always uh, errors in production. There's al there's always something that you did not think of, that, or the environment is just slightly different in production than this in pre-production or stage or whatever you 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 have before that. So. Check your check your log files for exceptions, and you can also create. So if you're using the clouds, then you can create alerts that actually uh, that can actually send you an email or uh, ping you, warn you uh, when you um, if, if you experience uh, any exceptions or errors in in, in your log. Do that, and um, and then you can be a bit more proactive, and you you don't have to rely on your uh, customer that comes and tells you that that something doesn't work. Thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for all of your comments and have a great evening. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.